Kids are weird. There is no arguing that. And social media has helped them to spread their weirdness to every corner of the globe. They make up new words or shorten existing words. When I was younger, we shortened words or used acronyms when texting because you had a hard character limit and each text cost you money. Also, you had to type LOL as 555-666-555. But today, with TikTok being so popular, people are shortening words so they can better fit their message into a 60-second video. So a word like charisma gets shortened to riz. To be clear, it's not a bad thing that kids are weird. They should embrace that weirdness. Embracing your weirdness is the core message of Dangers in My Heart. Welcome once again to Musings by Danan. If you're new here, my name is Danan. I'm currently reading over 600 manga and light novels, and my two favorite genres are fantasy and romance. So on this channel, we talk a lot about both of those genres, but we tend to look more into story structure and tropes, rather than how cool the fight scenes are or how great the animation or artwork is. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly ask you to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel, and it's free. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Many of you have already watched the anime. Or, if you're like me, you're caught up on the manga. And based on how the pacing is going and how many episodes we have left, you realize this season is probably going to end at around chapter 113. But some of you are wondering why Dangers in My Heart resonates with you so much. The answer is pretty simple. As I stated earlier, the series is about embracing your own weirdness, which is much harder than it sounds. But it becomes easier when you realize the girl you're in love with is a weirdo, just like you are. Let's discuss what happened so far leading up to last week's episode so you can see what I mean. Ichikawa Kyotaro is a chinubio. He suffers heavily from 8th grade syndrome. He doesn't think anyone understands him, he thinks he's darker than he is, and he has difficulty interacting with the real world. In fact, if the world knew how dangerous of a serial killer he is going to become, they would probably lock him up. For the past few years, he's been studying death and murder in his spare time, preparing for the inevitable. Ichikawa does know one thing, though. Yamada Ana will be his first victim. After all, she's always on his mind. Of course, it isn't long before he realizes the reason he can't stop thinking about her. It's because he likes her. Of course, it takes Yamada getting injured for him to realize this. The two start to spend more and more time together, to the point that Yamada's friends notice. But as good friends do, they investigate Ichikawa, decide he's a good match for Yamada, and then give them room for their relationship to grow. Quick rant, but I promise it'll all make sense. Well done anime openings do a lot to set the tone of the series, and through them you can get a feel for what the series is going to be about. Ichikawa's world is in shades of gray. His only joy in life is the darkness in humanity and in his soul. Until he meets Yamada. She shows him that the world is full of color. In other words, she causes a rainbow to slam into his life, which, of course, shakes him to his core. And that is what season one of the anime is all about. Ichikawa's world is now full of color, so how does he deal with that? He tries to grow into a person who can handle all these colors. When you're only used to dealing with black, white, and gray, a rainbow can be overwhelming. But what about season two's opening? In season one, Ichikawa realized his feelings and spent more and more time with Yamada throughout the school year. They're not dating, but it's pretty obvious that they're interested in each other. Season two's opening shows them getting closer and closer to each other. At the beginning of the opening, Ichikawa is following behind Yamada. He's not worthy to stand next to her. At least, that's his perspective. But Yamada is always looking back, waiting for him to catch up. Or waiting for him to realize that he shouldn't be behind her. Throughout the opening, the two of them inch ever closer together, until the end of it, when they're sitting on a park bench, practically touching. The thing is, color came into Ichikawa's life fairly early on in season one. He realized his feelings for her at the end of episode three, and by the next episode, she was riding double with him on his new bike. 
The next few episodes were about him coming to terms with his feelings and realizing how important Yamada had become to his daily life. At first, he worshipped her. She was this unattainable flower that he was just lucky enough to be in her presence. But then, he got to know the real her. The jealous, greedy Yamada. The goofball who doesn't know how to express her feelings any better than he does. And he went from liking her to loving her. The more time Ichikawa spends with Yamada, the more he comes to realize that he's not really that weird. Because Yamada, tall, statuesque, perfect Yamada, is just as weird as he is. And if she's weird, that means everyone is weird. But others do worship her, specifically Pigman, who is obsessed with Yamada. Ichikawa finds this strange Twitter account constantly replying to Yamada's posts. It seems like every post she makes has a comment from Pigman. Ichikawa freaks out about this, and this causes a ton of anxiety, but eventually he discovers that Pigman is another model, a co-worker of Yamada's, one who just happens to worship Yamada. Of course, the other model thinks that Yamada is perfect, mature, and amazing. She's always so calm and collected, the perfect idol to worship. She doesn't know the real Yamada, which is why Yamada is able to open up to Ichikawa. He knows her. He's seen her. He's seen the darkness in her heart and didn't run away. Yamada can be entirely herself when she's around Ichikawa, which is why she loves him. That's right. This whole time you thought Ichikawa was the dangerous one. But it has always been Yamada. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash There are several tiers to choose from. You can pick an anime or manga for me to do a video about, or you can join our monthly manga club. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Jiraiya, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Squishy, Brett, Roxy, Sean, Pob Zombie, Mark, Borgie, Naswin, Pedro, Tom, Cole, Midge, Detchoff, Rally, Frank, Alex, Jenny, Alex, Julio, Michael, Valeri, Apricot, and Slowpoke. You guys are awesome. I post new anime or manga videos often, or you can click here to watch additional videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Damon.